Please welcome Jeremy Clarkson. This is on fire. Well, five puffs, one not for certain, and then... What do you mean, one not for certain? <laughs> uh, one not, then. I'm really, really certain. <laughs> that really suits you. <laughs> I think, finally, you've come. <laughs> Ouch. Sit I down. Sit down and stop bullying him. How are you, Jeremy? Great to see you again. You too. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, I think you, you must be... You're in danger of becoming a bit of a national institution. You're going to have to get all cosy and comfy and cuddly, because people love you. I believe that you, there's a poll on, on the uh, internet uh, and you're quite hard on the poll to be made Prime Minister. Are you oh, no, I knew about that. No, no, somebody told me about that. I'm sixth, apparently. Sixth. So, sixth. the sixth most popular poll is for me to be Prime Minister. It's funny because uh, David Cameron is, is our local MP. Yeah. And was saying the other day, well, I stand more chance than you are. Well, no, actually, matey boy, I've got more votes than you already. <laughs> but I think people would like you as Prime Minister. They I would, think you would because there would be no bus lane on the M4 immediately. <laughs> <laughs> And Can you see that actually? Yes. No, no, the next yeah. thing you'll like the next one even more. Yeah. There'll be no more government. I'd go in Monday morning, get rid of the bus lane, and then just close it all down. But how would you do that? Would you still well, would you still come to work? Uh, yes. Would that cameraman still come to work? He bloody better. He would. <laughs> Your puffs, they'd still be here. Everyone doctors would still go. You don't need them. But all don't we need them to work out where the money goes and how things are regulated? The money goes in, we've got tax collectors that comes in, you don't need them. OK, what about things like where, where, knowing where to put the white speed cameras and that kind of thing? Take them down. Yeah. <laughs> don't, no, no, honestly, it's, it's, you just don't need so much government. You need one bloke, pops in on a Tuesday morning, yeah. takes his cardi off, puts me, me, you know, I'd be nice, I'll Tuesday, darling, I'm just popping down around the country. Walking in the civil service, anything on this week? Not really, no. <laughs> Bloke's a... bloke lost in his canoe, found it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but okay. what about uh, enforcing things like smoking regulations and drinking hours and that kind of thing? Smoking, honestly. Last time you were on the show, you said you were going to give up smoking because it was just before the big ban. Yeah. Okay? And part of me doesn't like the ban, but part of me, I love the fact that if you go out now in the evening somewhere, you come out and you don't smell a smoke. No, you smell you of other people's BO. <laughs> <laughs> All restaurants, now you walk in and go, oh, God almighty, this smells just horrendous <laughs> on people's armpits. Um, no, I I, I, do you know what it was? I really did try to give up. I mean, did absolutely. How did you try? What did you try? Oh, well, what I did was I didn't put cigarettes in my mouth. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> that was how it but did off. you try patches? Did you try hypnotherapy? No, gum. Gum. Okay. Uh, chewed gum. It's not bad, actually. If people really do want to give up, it, it's not a, bad, uh, not a bad idea, gum. But, uh, no, what made me take it up again was... I just thought, no, I'm not having the government telling me whether I can smoke or not. But I can understand where you're coming from, because no-one wants to be told what to do, and we do have, obviously... Do you think it's one of the worst states in Europe for this kind of thing, or other parts of Europe worse? You've travelled No, the we're, the we're the worst. We're the worst. It's funny, I used to travel to America and think, when I got home, like, I'd kiss the tarmac, like you'd landed in a free country again. Now, when I go to America, I think that's freer than it is here. I just think the regulations here, it's that no reversing without a banksman. And there was an advert last night on the, on the radio for drink, uh, whiskey or something, and it said, well, we encourage some responsible drinking. Well, shut up! Yeah. And that government adverts, don't eat more than six grams of salt a day. Fuck off! Leave us alone! <laughs> I get so angry at this, these rules. And, you know why you're like this? You've been drinking more than the government allowed them out of coffee. <laughs> no, I really, I really haven't. No, I, I, it's just everywhere you turn, there's somebody with a new rule and a new regulation. I just want to shut it all down. How, how, how do you feel about the uh, young men wandering around town in their hoodies? Oh, you, yeah, you saw the papers. Do you think the thing in the papers, uh, Jeremy had a run-in with a young fellow in a hoodie and uh, you picked him up by the neck, I believe, and held well, him up in the air for some period of time. Reports of, of my heroism, I, I fear, are greatly exaggerated. Well, you come out of this as being a, a great hero, because normally if people see a gang of kids, they think, well, they, they might be carrying a shank. Yeah, well, quite. A machete of some sort, but I didn't. I, think, I just thought, oh, that big bloke, I'm going to have it. And I discovered it wasn't a big bloke, it was actually an eight-year-old standing much further away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you So, um... <laughs> I, well, he might have been that. I don't know. Have you reached that age yet where you can't tell how old kids are? Of course. Like either eight or 32. And you just, anything, in, I don't know. <laughs> and then I sort of grabbed him. And then you would do the weird thing is, he's standing there thinking, I'm not worried about whether he's got a knife, but I am worried whether I get done for assault here. I see. I see. No, it is. I mean, without wishing to sound too serious and uh, morose about it, but it is just awful that these. Nobody's telling them what to do, these yeah. kids. Well, yeah, I should that... have just cut his head off. Yeah, that would have been, <laughs> that would have been certainly the sensible route to it take. Would, yeah. uh, here's the thing what car do you drive? A uh, Lamborghini. Okay, now that's quite a flash car, isn't it? Yeah, but it's yeah. grey. Is it a nice car to drive? Lovely car to drive. But aren't say, they quite small? You're too yeah, big for that kind no, of car. No, it's very right? small, and that's why in my mind, as I drive it around, it's inconspicuous. You look at, why are you looking at me? 
And you're in a Because it's, it's a grey Lamborghini, it's grey and it's little, so I think it's inconspicuous. How fast can your uh, Lamborghini uh, go? 196. No, that's just silly. Why? Well, because you're never going to be allowed to go that fast. Why? Why do you want to go that fast? Get home. <laughs> you can't drive that fast. I mean, I can't. What's the fastest you've ever driven in uh, your Lamborghini? 196. No, you actually <laughs> took it to 196? Yeah. You can't drive that fast, it would hurt it's you. It's really something. easy, look, no, it isn't. All you do is, just watch, watch my foot. I know just what you do. Just do that. Yes, yes, but, but doesn't your do face that. all go back and you go, ooh. Moves up. Listen to the radio, it's quite noisy. 196, that's horrible, that must be horrible. No, but do you, be... want to get home, do you want to get home to see your children tonight? Yes, yes. I want to get home, but I live 70 miles away. Yes. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to do it, really, would you? Isn't it scary driving that fast? No! It must be terrifying. It's nice. I went up to 100 miles an hour once. <laughs> Not when you came on the Top Gear track, you didn't. <laughs> well, you didn't. Well, OK, don't even start on that. You know you... I don't want to be rude here, but you fucked me over there, Clark. You know, I did fast, and then it was a rainy day. You got lost! No, listen, I... You got lost! Listen, you, I was... No, no, the driver who was bringing me there got lost on the way there. No, and then he, you, we have footage of you on the track. You arrive at a corner and then go... Because safety, safety. It's not safe, there's a threat, there's nothing coming out But I don't know someone isn't else, isn't there? What if Lewis Hamilton's racing past and I'm banging him and you've got to let him go? He isn't. I went over one little line, he took, how many seconds did you take off me? Oh, hundreds. But it was, you wouldn't go over one little line, you just missed an entire section out. But it, because there was a puddle on it and the sun was shining in the puddle and I was um, but momentarily then you complained that we didn't invite you back. Well, you did invite me back and here's why I'm angry as well. I got invited back and then I got bumped. I was invited back and they said, and I was looking forward to you coming on the show and you bumped mm. me. And who did you bump me for? Well, we told you it was Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, now why would you bump me for Lewis Hamilton? We didn't. We bumped you for James Blunt. No! <laughs> no! No, we did. No, we did. That's the worst thing anyone has ever said well, to me in my life. Honestly, I figured we could get you any time. <laughs> Blunty's is a hard man to get hold of. He's always touring and away. Blunty? Oh, you're close to me, Blunty now. I am, no. He's a funny guy. Have you had him on here? I'm a funny guy! <laughs> you're not available. You're not a busy man. Oh. You come here, you do the radio show, you're not busy. We get any time down there. It's always lovely to see you. I would like to do well next time, but I, don't, I fear that I might not, under the pressure at the moment. It's the same as me. I always feel I'm the stand in man for chat shows. I mean, <laughs> I know that Dustin Hoffman's supposed to be here, and that the last minute, oh, Dustin's. No, no, away. you're a good guest. Oh, yeah, but I'm backup. Yes. I'm a backup guy. Yeah, you are available, it has oh, yeah, to be. Yeah, I mean, said. basically, everybody else turned up. We've all got suits and ties. There's two of them. I'm here all on oh, my we own. We know he's 70 miles away. The way he drives, he'll be here in 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 he's always a terrible guy. He's always yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, we had Richard Hammond on the show a few times. Yeah. Uh, and I noticed that in. On Not the as show many times so, as we've had him on. No, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the new DVD you have out, uh, what's this one called? It's the Supercar. Showdown. Supercar Showdown. Showdown. I'm imagining in this show you take some supercars and you compare them. Show them down. But the, uh, the clip that we showed early on, that was from it. And you're crashing. Yeah. What car was that you were crashing? It was crashing a Renault, at? an A610. Okay. And is that a fast car? Yeah, very fast. Not now. Isn't that the car you recommended years ago over, there was like, when it came out in 91 yeah. or 92, and you yeah. said, don't buy the Ford Escort. Yeah, no, I liked it then, but I changed my mind. Why did you change your mind? Because we could get one really cheap to smash up. <laughs> uh, but I wonder whether you're smashing up because you want a bit, because after, let's face it, you used to be the most popular person on Top Gear, and mm. now clearly you're probably, mm. you might be two, you're probably even number three, because mm. Hammond, after the crash, mm. brilliantly engineered, mm. fooled us all with that he wasn't really in it, was he? Uh, because the crash there, and I wonder whether you're doing this crash, because in that it looks like you're, you're going to, are you, are you trying to get a bit of that uh, popularity back there? Are you, it's are viewing you figures, really, as you know. Viewing figures are everything, we keep being told they're not, but they are. Richard's crash caused us to have very really large viewing figures. Figures. Didn't you get like the largest audience that uh, the BBC BBC, BBC Two, two had ever years? had? Oh yes, eight point something million, huge, wow. massive. Yeah. Been, they've dipped. They've dipped a lot actually. They dipped down to sort of mid sixes. So we thought we'd really one of us has to take another hit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> get it back up there again. Uh, and it is. It's going to be an annual event. Okay. One of us will have to go out and have a massive car accident yeah, yeah. just to stay ahead of the game. How do you decide who's going to be the one? Well, it was me this year, James next year. Got to be James, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to drop him out of an aeroplane. <laughs> uh, how good to have you back on the show. Jeremy, it's lovely to have you here. I seriously think you should consider giving something back to the public and maybe standing in some sort of office. I can't. Be bothered. Honestly, it's such a waste of time. Well, it's a shame to hear you say that. No, it's been fun to be here, and thank you so much for having me again. And I'm sorry Dustin Hoffman couldn't make it. Oh, we didn't. You're a lovely guest. You're our first choice every time. No, no. 
Yes, you are. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want a good Christmas treat for the car bore in your life, I recommend the supercar, what's it called? Showdown, Showdown. and okay. it's not for car bores, it's for people who are young and thrusting and intelligent. <laughs> in your dreams, Clarkson. <laughs> That's the car bore stocking filler right there. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Mr Jeremy Clarkson. Thank you. Thank you, Great, as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. You get jumpy American guy. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson.